In this video, we're going to start to talk about section 6.3, representing functions as power series. Now, this should be very much related to what we talked about in the last section. Let's look at the opening motivation. We're going to start by considering the series listed here of uh, x to the n as n goes from 0 to infinity. Remember, this is what we called a power series in the last section, and it kind of looks like just a really long or infinitely long polynomial thing. Now, in the previous section, we looked at this specific example, and we said that, you know, this is actually going to be a geometric series. Uh, and we can kind of see that basic geometric shape being used there. We can also see here that a appears to be the value of 1, and that our value of r would be x, because we start with 1, and x is what we multiply by every single time. So we can also then see that based on what we know about geometric series, that we should be able to establish an interval of convergence, which is negative 1 to 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and just write down here how exactly it is that we know that. So I'll say that from section 5.2, we know that if the absolute value of x is less than 1, because that's the absolute value of r, Notice that this does indeed produce this interval that I have over here. But if that's the case, then the series that we're working with here, again, which is x to the n, will automatically have to converge as a geometric series, and we can state precisely what it would converge to. Remember that formula was the value of a over 1 minus r. So what we've seen is that actually this power series right here is exactly the same as this function as long as we're on this interval, negative 1 to 1. So on negative 1 to 1, we can represent a function f of x equals... 1 over 1 minus x as the power series of x to the n, n goes from 1 to infinity. So this is actually a really, really powerful idea. What again, what we're saying is that if you were to take this function here and say, plug it into your calculator to try to graph it, and you were to take this power series, maybe, I don't know, you write out the first 10 terms of this, and you plug that into your calculator, what you'll see is that on the interval from negative 1 to 1, these things should be equal. They should look the same. Now, of course, if you were to try to do this with your calculator, but you only typed in the first 10 items off of this uh, series right here, you would find that they're not actually identical yet, but they're pretty close. Notice that these things only become identical if I include infinitely many terms in this power series. So this kind of uh, provides us with our motivation for this section. Our goal in this section is going to be to try to figure out, if I have a particular function, is there a way that I can represent it with a power series? Kind of like how we were creating modeling polynomials for functions in previous sections. Now, one of the things we might ask at this point is, why in the world would we actually care to do this? And in particular, this sort of an approach of modeling functions with power series is very useful when trying to solve differential equations, which is then a topic you guys will recover when you enter a differential equations class. Um, it's good for approximating functions, like we were just describing, and that can be particularly useful when it comes to the main focus here of our chapter 6, which is, how do I actually integrate extremely difficult functions? So we're going to take a look at um, how these ideas can be used and developed and eventually see their implementation. In the next video, we'll take a look here at something like example number 1, and we'll see if we started with a function like this g of x down here, how would we actually find a power series that models it?